In order to do math well, you need to learn to be precise with your writing and your language. We're going to introduce several vocabulary words in this section. But in order to do this, we need to introduce the idea of a variable. A variable can be thought of as a symbol that represents a number. In this case, we will use them as generic symbols that we will replace with a specific number later. Definitions. The number A divides the number B if B divided by A has no remainder. The number A is divisible by the number B if A divided by B has no remainder. The number A is a divisor of the number B if B divided by A has no remainder. Notice how similar all these words and definitions look. Even though the words are similar, there are very important differences between them. Getting these details correct is important to mathematical thinking. The best way to understand new ideas is to work with specific examples. Example, is it true that 2 divides 10? We are being asked whether a certain statement is true. So the answer will either be yes, the statement is true, or no, the statement is false. This problem is asking us to apply the definition of the word divides. It is very important that we match up the symbols with the definition carefully. The number A divides the number B if B divided by A has no remainder. By comparing the language, we can see that the number A is 2 and the number B is 10. So what we need to do is we need to replace these two variables with the specific values for this problem. B is 10 and A is 2. So here's the question we need to ask. Does 10 divided by 2 have a remainder? In order to do this, we have to do the calculation. 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. And since there is no remainder, it is in fact true that 2 divides 10. The final answer will include this explanation. Since 10 divided by 2 has no remainder, the statement 2 divides 10 is true. Notice that this problem had three steps. First, we had to look at the definition to see what calculation we needed to do. The second step was to actually do the calculation and see what the result is. And the third step is to interpret that result to tell us whether the statement was true or false. Although this may seem like a long problem, with practice, this actually becomes very fast. Example, is it true that 10 divides 2? Most likely, your immediate reflex is to answer yes. But let's take a closer look. We need to compare the statement with the definition. The number A divides the number B if B divided by A has no remainder. In this problem, the number A is 10 and the number B is 2. So B is 2 and A is 10. We need to see whether 2 divided by 10 has a remainder. The problem says that you have two objects and you're trying to make groups of 10. If you see this, then it's quick to see that 2 divided by 10 is equal to 2 tenths. And that number has a remainder. There are 2 out of 10 pieces needed to make a full grouping. Since 2 divided by 10 has a remainder, the statement 10 divides 2 is false. Becoming familiar with new vocabulary terms usually results from experience. We will be seeing these types of words over and over and over again in the next few sections. And you will find that through repeated exposure, these words will become very natural to use. Example, determine all the divisors of 16. Let's look back at the definitions. The number A is a divisor of the number B if B divided by A has no remainder. We are trying to find divisors of 16. So 16 is the number B. This means we need to see what numbers A satisfy the property that B divided by A has no remainder. A systematic way to check this is to take 16 and divide it by numbers starting from 1 and increasing at each step. We will write out the calculations so that you can see them, but you really should be able to do these mentally. 16 divided by 1 is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 16 divided by 3 is 5 and a third. 16 divided by 4 is equal to 4. When your divisor is greater than or equal to your quotient, then you know that you have all the information that you need. The reason for this is a property of division that you may have noticed, but we have never discussed. If A divided by B is equal to C, then A divided by C is equal to B. This means that finding one divisor automatically gets you another one. So in this case, our divisors are 1 and 16, 2 and 8, and 4. There's no reason to write down 4 twice. When we write out our final answer, it is best to write them in increasing order. The divisors of 16 are 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Example, determine all the divisors of 24. 
Again, we will write out the calculations, but you should be doing this mentally. 24 divided by 1 is 24. 24 divided by 2 is 12. 24 divided by 3 is 8. 24 divided by 4 is 6. 24 divided by 5 is 4 and 4 fifths. Our divisor is bigger than our quotient, so we can stop. The divisors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. There are a few more vocabulary terms for this section. Definitions. A prime number is a number that has exactly two divisors, namely one in itself. A composite number is a number that has more than two divisors. A common divisor is a shared divisor of two different numbers. And the greatest common divisor is the largest of all the common divisors. This last term, the greatest common divisor, will be very important when we start working with fractions. Example, determine all the common divisors and the greatest common divisor of the numbers 16 and 24. We have already computed the divisors of 16 and 24, so we will simply write them out. The divisors of 16 are 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. And the divisors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. The common divisors are the numbers that appear in both lists. In this case, the common divisors are 1, 2, 4, and 8. The greatest common divisor is the largest of the numbers in this list, so the greatest common divisor is 8. For these problems, your presentation should include the list of all the divisors and then listing the common divisors and the greatest common divisor in their own separate sentences.